What's going on everybody? I'm here today to give you one of my first case mounting tutorials that I'm going to start getting into. Uh, I've finished a lot of the repair tutorials so now we're going to be working with the case mounting. Um, today I'm going to show you how to change the ring of light color LEDs <coughs> on the Xbox 360 FAT console. Um, as you can see I have the ring of light board here. Um, and what we'll be doing is changing all the colors. Um, it's not too difficult. Uh, let me get started by showing you what you need. You will need a soldering iron, um, uh, some solder, of course. Um, you can either have a pair of small needle nose pliers, or my favorite, I believe these are referred to as reverse tweezers. And this makes it a lot easier when you're installing them because you don't have to hold it closed, it'll actually keep itself closed. Um, so that's what I'll be using here. But if you don't have access, you can use pliers. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult. Next, you will need some SMD or surface mount LEDs. Um, you will need five. Uh, I'm not going to be showing how to put the error codes on there. Uh, that takes a little bit more skill. Um, and it's something I don't really have enough uh, space on my uh, <laughs> camera here to add an extra 20 minutes just to show you how to do all that. Um, so you will need to keep in mind that this will um, not have error codes. So if you red ring, um, instead of having a red ring, you're going to have um, no colors at all except maybe the power, the front power button. And even then, I think that one doesn't light either. So uh, I believe um, I believe that uh, you know that's how you'll have to indicate if you have a red ring. Um, but otherwise, let's get started. Um, first, we're going to get started with the removal. Um, hopefully, my iron is heated up here. What we're going to do first, um, it's always a lot simpler and easier uh, if you uh, actually take some solder and get it on there. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to apply it amply. Um, it does take a little bit of work because you can't exactly just uh, get it on one side and then then take it off. So you have to get it kind of simultaneously on there. Um, get some of this extra stuff off that I spread around. After that, it's always good to clean it up, and sometimes you can actually break pieces of the LED off. So it's good to try and um, uh, clean it up a little bit and uh, make sure that none of the pieces of LED are, are still stuck in there um, because that will make it a lot harder to install. All right, let's get this next one, get some more solder. doesn't matter how much you apply when you're taking them off. I mean, uh, most of it just ends up uh, getting smoked away anyways. There's that one. We're going to go back and clean it up a little bit. Like I said, you just you want to make sure that you don't have any pieces in there. It's going to make your life a lot more difficult later. Flip this over a little bit, make it easier to get to these. As you can see, you're just kind of spreading it and getting some on all three contacts. And then once you have actually gotten a little bit of solder on all three, then you can just go from behind it and kind of touch it flat, and you'll hit all three contacts and melt them at the same time. That's how I'm doing it anyways. I'm sure there's probably a better way or an easier way, but that's the easiest way I've done it. Now we're going to take this last one off right here. Of course, this one's going to be the most difficult. All right, there we go. Clean that up a little bit. Okay, now for this one. This one you do have to be careful because it it's really weak. It's the uh, middle power button, and you do have some of these other components around, especially depending on which version of the Ring of Light board you have, the RF module. Um, so you got to make sure you've melted it before you just scrape it off because you can scrape it off 
and not actually be desoldering it and you'll end up ripping your pads off. If you rip those pads off, you're very unlikely to be able to fix it. So just make sure you plot, get enough. And that actually slid off real easily. Usually that's the hardest one. It's definitely usually the hardest one to get that one to go back on. Okay. Now, with your replacement LEDs, there are some different designs. Um and there are some different uh, looks um, but typically on the back there's going to be a green arrow um, the side that has the wide side of the arrow the double sided piece is going to be um, the positive and then the, uh, the side with one point is going to be the negative get that out of there see if I can scoop this up and maybe get some sort of close-up what I'm talking about. Now there are other types um, and you may have to talk with the person. Yeah, you're probably not going to be able to see that. That's kind of... But you can maybe see a little bit of that green on there. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, on these three contacts here uh, the first one we're going to put on is this one. Um, you're going to put the big side on this first one, the big one, and then you're going to attach the negative side to the small middle one. So it's going to kind of be like this right here. And that's how I'm going to hold it to solder it back on. Okay, let's get this a little bit flatter best I can. All right. Now let's get some solder on our soldering iron and get ready to do this one. Switch my arms around here too. Okay. Now you're just going to try to get it on there. And you're also going to want to try to line it up because uh, if you don't line it up, of course, it'll, uh, it won't line up with the second one and uh, then that's not going to work out very well so you'll have to end up redoing it all and then you'll want to maybe hold it for just a second or two make sure it's good and cured okay there's that one now I'm going to get some more solder and do the second side Now you can bridge the connections for that one port that you're not going to use. So uh, if you do, just kind of scrape at it, and it should uh, should take most of that off. I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this a little bit better than I'm seeing it on my camera or on the uh, screen of it, anyways. All right, next we'll get your next LED. I never take them all out at once because you're almost guaranteed to lose one that way. Okay. Alright, now on this one, it's kind of all works the same and it's going to kind of rotate around as you go. So the big side of the triangle is going to go on this first pad right here, and then the little side of the pointed triangle is going to go in the middle again. So let's get ready to put this one on now. Side. I should have enough solder to get this other side. I used a little bit too much here. Okay, and there's that one. Alright, next one's going to be the same story. You're just remember you're kind of rotating it. So if you were looking at it 
like we were looking at this one, if you rotated it around, you're going to be putting them on the same pads. So that's what I'll do here. It's going to be um, the big side of the triangle on this, um, the big side of the triangle on this first pad here, and then the little one in the middle is going to be where the little part of the triangle is. Now remember, I just I just rotated it, so it's now upside down. So if you were trying to do it like this, it would be this pad, the, the one over here on, on this side, and then the, the middle would be where your little part of your triangle goes. But I like to rotate it just because it makes it a little easier to get to when you're doing these on this side. And I just so happen to pick it up the right direction. Nice. <clears throat> All right. Let's get some solder on this. This one's also the hardest because the board shakes kind of. All right. Now let's clean this up because you don't want to accidentally bridge a connection with some of these other little parts over here. So you do want it to be somewhat clean and if there's too much solder it'll keep that little white cover piece that goes back on this from going on properly. Can we look at this a little closer make sure I got it on there. Now let me add a little bit more here. Didn't quite get a good solid connection. I'm about to bridge the top of it here. That wouldn't be good. Okay, now that's good. So we'll move on to this one. Um, now with this one, if you're holding it right side up, um, it's going to be this this first pad here that's right next to my fingernail. And then uh, that's going to be where the uh, wide end of the triangle is. And then that middle one's going to be where the little part of the triangle is. I can I gotta clean off these little reverse pliers here, they're a little bit sticky. Alright. Now I got that clamped, let's get some solder. Usually I have my helping hands which is like a clamp system that will actually hold everything for you, but since I'm using my camera stand as well, it's not as easy to do that. So I'm kind of having to do it in a very crappy way today. Okay, that should be good there. Looks well. I got a little bit of a bridge here, so let's go ahead and add a little more solder. <coughs> a little bit more solder and make sure it's on there good and it's not bridged. Okay, I believe that's good. Now for the last one, the middle one. This one's a pain just because the contacts are a lot smaller. Um. So it is kind of a little bit harder to get it done. Now, let's see here. Let me take a look at this. I'm going to double check my work here and make sure everything is good and tight. Everything looks pretty good to me. All right. Now we're going to do this middle one, which is the one right underneath the actual power button. As you can probably see, there's two little contacts. The contact on the left, over this way, is going to be where you put the big part of the triangle, and then the contact on this side is the one with the little part of the triangle. So let's get my LED set up, and some solder on the gun, or iron, this isn't a soldering gun. Now 
like I said, this one's the hardest one. You just got to really kind of work your way in there as best you can. As well as keep in mind that you still have to have room on the other side. See, like right there, that's too far over. I'm not going to be able to get it to stick there. So I'm going to need to take this one off a little bit. Try again. That might work right there. Let's see. Now let's get some solder for this other side. And we are just about done. Now let me uh, double check this because that was kind of close. Yeah, that looks good. It's It was kind of close to being a little bit too far over on the this side of it but luckily it's just on there enough to where it's got a good hold all right and that's all there is to that um after this you just install it and make sure everything's good i'd also give it a good wiggle while it's plugged in and make sure none of the leds are loose because uh if you give it a good wiggle and any of the lights uh flash or kind of blink a little bit then you know you've got to go back and get a better connection um Anyways, I appreciate you guys watching this video tutorial. That's pretty much all for this. Um, if anybody's interested in a tutorial for getting the error light, uh, the, R, the red ring of death error code lights to function properly, then give me a like and uh, leave a comment in this video. And uh, if I get enough likes and everything, I'll do it. Um, don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have a lot more tutorials up, and I've already got a lot of tutorials up for repairs and just uh, case mod showcases. Um, so don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Alright guys, until next time.